Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is draw debug float history. There are two nodes here for draw debug float history and a third node to actually get the information in. So this video will cover three nodes. But let's just actually show what we're going to cover. That little square that we see there off in the distance, it actually is a live histogram. Every time I hit forward, my velocity changes on my character. And that histogram is going to show us a graph of the velocity in real time because I have it set up running on my tick. And as you'll notice, as I'm doing different things, like maybe strafing, walking backwards, and my velocity is changing, our graph itself is going to change. So let's look and see how this is set up. First of all, ignoring the debug float history nodes, we need the float history sample node. What this does is you have a float history variable. So in this case, I created a float history variable of debug float history type. This stores all, it's basically an array, and it stores all of your values. You add the float history sample node right here, and you add in a value and you put in our float history. Now it's gonna output the new float history, so it has our new sample in it, and it's gonna go from there. Now there are some variables inside of here, uh, blah, 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 which, um, where are they at? Uh, here we go. Which determines the max samples it'll hold, the minimum value, the maximum value, and the auto just min max. This is why you saw when I ran this, I may have only been doing a very small amount of movement and you see it spiking. But if I do a larger amount and then I start spiking, my spikes are much smaller, even larger. And then my spikes are even tinier. That's because it's setting my maximum to 600 because that's my maximum velocity. And then my spikes of 50 or 20 are much smaller. Whereas when I start it off, my spikes take up the whole thing. Again, it's relative. We're setting our minimum and maximum of that history to whatever it is based on our minimum and maximum values. We could adjust this and say 1000, for example, and hit play. And now my spikes are gonna plateau off roughly 60% up because I'm at 600 of 1000. So those are the options there. Your max samples is basically how many samples you record. You know, we could do something like 1000 and hit play, and you'll notice our graph is much, much different. We have a thousand samples re we're recording now instead of a hundred, so you can see the spikes much better as our data persists longer. But by default, we're gonna have a hundred, zero and zero for min and max with auto adjust turned on. Now that we've covered that, and again, how to add history samples, these are just basically entries into this variable, we would display it. And that's where our draw debug float history nodes come in. Now there are two nodes here. We're going to cover the first one, which is our location, and then we'll cover transform. By default, these are the inputs for our location. And here's how it works. We put in the float history. So this is where it's going to grab all of our data from. And then we put in the location. This is the location for the bottom left corner of our history or our histogram. In this case, I'm drawing it at the middle point of this cube, which is why you see it zero, zero, zero. Now you'll notice as I move around, it is following, well, not following, but it's always facing the player. The player always has it front facing. And that is what our draw debug float history location node does. The location determines the bottom left corner and the location version of this node will always rotate the face, the player. And that's something to keep in mind. Draw size is basically how big is this going to be? I have it 300 units by 200 units. You could, of course, obviously change this to be whatever you want. Here's 100 by 200, and you'll see it's much skinnier. You just, whatever size you want it. Draw color is, of course, the color, and duration is how long it will persist for. Since every frame I'm grabbing the velocity from the character, adding it to our history, and then drawing, I have a duration of zero. Zero means that frame only. Because I have it on a tick, it's basically going to refresh my image every single tick. So that's why if you want it to be a set duration, then have it a duration in a time. So 2.5 will be two and a half seconds. 
zeros per frame. It just depends on what you want your result to be. The point of this node is to simply get a history of data, in this case floats, onto your screen over time. By over time, I mean every single time you add a entry into here, it's going to represent a piece of time. You put one thing in there, then you have one piece of time. You have 10 entries in here, you have 10 pieces of time. And your histogram will represent that appropriately. Now the difference between the history location and history transform is the transform version, if we plug it in, we'll set the same values, 100, well, let's go back to the other version, like 300 by 200. We'll draw this one in maybe a blue, and we'll set it back to zero. We'll hook up our float history, and we'll go ahead and compile this. We'll get an error. Transforms by default need some sort of an input. So we'll make a transform so I don't have to split this. And here's our transform. And our transform takes in a location, rotation, and a scale. We'll go ahead and run this, and we're going to see this blue one right here. And you'll notice the difference. It's going to stay in the world at the location and the rotation and the scale that we fit in. So that's going to be your difference. Location is, boom, draw it in the bottom left corner here and always face the player. Transform is draw it here with these exact settings. So if I want it rotated like 90 on the Z, now we have it rotated 90 on the Z. So that's something to keep in mind. Those are your differences. And that's pretty much going to wrap up this video. The draw debug float history nodes allow us to draw a history or histogram of data. We get that data by using an add float history sample node, putting in the value we want and the float history variable. The float history variable is pretty simple. I just created a new variable and we can set those settings inside of it here. We feed that into our draw debug float history nodes. They take in the float history. They take in the location, which will always face the player, or the transform, which is fixed. The size, we wish to draw it on the screen. The color, and then the duration, zero being one frame only.